Okay, students. Let us see various parts of the knuckle joint. In the knuckle joint, this is called a two eye, two eye or fork end. This is the front view and this is the top view of it. In the top view, it will look like this. And this is called single eye, these two. In the top view, looks like this. And the front view, looks like this. And there is a, there is a, a, a pin. This is called pin. Okay. And uh, there is a pin has only one view. They have not shown any top view of it. And there, then there is a collar. This is a collar. And the collar is shown in two views. This is the front view and this is the top view. And then there is a taper pin. This taper pin again is shown only in one view. Okay. So, now let us see various parts in uh, in 3D animation. You see, the pin looks like this. Pin has a tiny hole here where taper pin can be assembled. Fork end looks like this. This is also called double eye end and this is the single eye end and this is the collar. Okay. Okay, now they are showing the parts. They are rotating them and showing. Now what they do? Okay, they, they are assembling it. You see, they have inserted the pin, the collar, the hole should exactly match. Yeah, this is the assembled knuckle joint. Okay, this you have studied, see. This is the front view of the knuckle joint. This you have studied in uh, mechanical working drawing. Okay. Only that we are going to design it now. Okay. And the top view, how it looks. You see, this is the top view. From the top, it will be looking like this. Okay. And this is the isometric drawing. And this is uh, the right side view. Side view. <laughs> Can you make any sense of this? Just by looking at side view, you cannot say how it is. This is the sectional view. This is the sectional view cut in the middle. See? Uh, again here, this pin also is not shown in section. Though this is getting cut in the middle. And also this also is getting cut. I don't know. But this could have been shown in section. This can be shown in section. Hmm. Then, yeah, this is the half sectional view. Half sectional view. Yeah, half sectional front view. See, half means what? From the center line below, it won't be shown. From the center line up to it. The section will be shown. That's it. That is called half section of view. Okay. Knuckle joint is used to join two rods which are acted upon by tensile load and also compressive loads also will come. Only rotation it will not accept. It may be readily disconnected. Uh, readily means easily disconnected for adjustments or repair or anything. Then uh, you see, these uh, knuckle joints, no, they, they may be made in the fire with the, in the, um, uh, with, the, with the blacksmithy or forging. So, the edges should be machined. Otherwise, you will not have smooth edges and uh, better quality uh, of the joints will not have. Okay. And these are made of uh, steel or uh, uh, wrought iron, mostly carbon steels. Uh, uh, is the material that is used for uh, this uh, knuckle joint. Okay, knuckle joint uh, allows a little, um, you know, uh, you know, to, um, uh, twist in the two axes of the rods. You see, it is used to, to connect uh, the tractor to the tractor trolley. 
you see sometimes when on the roads you are turning then what happens is uh, what happens is the tractor trolley uh, a tractor when you are turning that okay there is a little play between the um, uh, 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 between the two axes little uh, angle it will be twisted okay that is how this uh, uh, knuckle joint is okay this is uh, okay so different parts you have seen already in the animation and uh, you know the edges should be uh, machined properly in order to get better quality of the joint you see machining is necessary uh, whenever you cast or you you uh, know forge something machining is necessary because you cannot get a smooth finish by casting and forging okay machining will give, give you accurate finish okay and the steel uh, steel and wrought iron uh, steel means carbon steels are used okay then uh, let us see the applications of it uh, okay it is used in links of cycle chain you see in cycle chain you see you will see small small uh, quarter joint not exactly as we uh, knuckle, uh, knuckle joint as not exactly as we are studying here but you know it is a form of uh, knuckle joint then tie rods of the uh, roof truss okay you can google all these things in the in google and see tension link between bridge structure and lever then pump rod and and wall rod joint with eccentric in the steam engine i have shown you uh, some days back the steam engine photo photos and all okay these are the applications where it is used you know these are the main parts of the knuckle joint uh, single eye single eye then knuckle pin or simply pin collar you see collar is the one that we are having for our shirt you know collar sleeves also you have you know to the shirt okay then you have uh, double eye uh, and split pin okay split pin though there is no split there split is not there oh it is running one minute uh, okay now see this is the this is the diagram that we normally draw in machine drawing okay see this is the single eye rod and uh, this one is the double eye and that is the pin we are having and, uh, and that is the split pin or simply taper pin you can call there is no split in that okay and that is the pin head you see that is the top view on the top the pin head and the eye those are the two circles that you are seeing in the top view and the dotted line is the is the pin diameter pin has one diameter and pin head has another diameter and that is the rod and uh, this is the single eye this is the single eye that is the double eye okay and uh, you see what are the dimensions this is d diameter of the rod is d okay and then uh, the single eye thickness is t it is taken as t and the double eye thickness is little lesser than that both are t1 and t2 is the head of the pin and also the collar they both are kept same it is not necessary to keep but you know for convenience sake they keep it okay and uh, you know some other proportions okay ah uh, yeah there are two dimensions here the eye uh, diameter the larger diameter is d2 and the, yeah that is the d2 and the d3 is the pin head diameter okay and that diameter is taken as d1 d1 is the pin diameter okay pin diameter is taken as d1 and there are the and uh, we see some other uh, proportions like 4d 4.5d you know these are all needed for drawing 
on the machine, right? You see, there is no design involved in this. So, what are the things that we are seeing? The tensile load acting on the rod will be given. Diameter of the rod is given as D. Diameter of the pin is uh, given as D1. And uh, diameter of the outer eye, outer eye, see, it is both for both single and double eye, it is D2, uh, both. And the thickness of the fork, that is double eye's thickness on the top and bottom, it is uh, uh, it is T1 and T is the thickness of the single eye, okay? That is the, the thickness of the single eye. And we have permissible tensile stress for rod material and permissible uh, sigma C is the crushing stress for the cotter material. Actually, it is wrong. It is not cotter. It should be... Um, uh, knuckle pin, knuckle pin material. You see, sigma t, sigma c, tau, all these things are there. Tau is permissible. This is the diagram that we normally use for designing uh, before, you know, in the exam also you have to draw this figure. You see, you learn, you practice. You see, it is showing partially uh, hatched section. See, this is partial um, section or broken section, we call it. That is the single eye. Okay. And uh, we have shown with the, uh, the with, with that uh, short break line, and here also short break line is shown. Okay, and then this is the single eye, and uh, uh, and also there is okay hatching should be different. You see, for both single eye hatching should be different, double eye hatching should be different. If single is inclined at 45 degrees, double eye should be inclined at 145 degrees, 135 degrees, okay, 90 degrees. Okay, and like that it should be. Okay, here anyway it is shown by color. You can the exam you need not show. You need not draw this with pencil. You can use a pen to draw and quickly. You see the head also is upside down. Uh, and uh, it doesn't matter how it is. Anyway, locking arrangement is there. Collar and uh, the taper pin is there. That will ensure it will not fall off. Okay. And uh, it is not like cotton. Coming to the design. Okay. First step, uh, even as we have seen in the cotter joint, first step is to design rod. The rods are always designed under tension, tensile failure, considering the tensile failure of the rod. Okay. Resisting area. You have to draw. You see in this figure, uh, yeah, here it is clear. See, rod is failing means where it is tearing. That is where it is tearing. What is the area? See, that area, you have to draw a circle. You have to show this diameter and you have to write the equation. And, uh, you know, this uh, sigma t is load upon area and this strength equation you will get. Okay. And this... Okay, and from that you will get D. Okay, now a design of the single eye end. So, considering the failure of the single eye, see how the diagram is. Anyway, if it is tearing across the hole, that is where it will tear. Okay, like this it will tear. You see the resistance, the areas, you know, which should break off. Okay, so... Okay, see that is the uh, strength equation that uh, load upon area and uh, you put here, uh, see that area you put here, so load is equal to area into stress. Okay, from this now, you see here, here are two unknowns, what D we found out, but D1 and T, so T we don't know. What is T? See, for that, uh, uh, yeah, here we have found out D. Okay, we don't know uh, T. Okay, we don't know D1 also. So, there is only one equation and two unknowns are there. Therefore, what you have to do? You have to use an empirical relation. So, see, empirical relation you see in this diagram yeah in the yeah in this diagram t t what proportion you will be taking this t you see the, the, the that t 
there is a little uh, more compared to the rod diameter. You see, rod diameter is the least, and uh, you know it is uh, it is used to. Uh, uh, you see there you know it is made into octagonal shape so that you know it can be uh, handled with uh, spanners and other things see it is not necessary that every time there should be octagonal uh, space okay and uh, one minute okay see this is the thickness t d1 is not known t is not known so what you have to do you have to use an empirical relation so empirical relation what you will use empirical relation you will use uh, t is equal to 1.25 d and then use it so one equation you will get okay okay now, uh, see th that rod is, see there it will shear. If, if, if uh, pin is there and we are pulling in tension, it will shear off like that. It will shear off and that area will be T, that is the thickness of the single eye. Okay. And uh, you see that is the center line there. That is the center line. And uh, you see it is a rectangle like that. From the center line to this place is uh, radius. And to the outer edge is uh, R1. That is D by 2. This is D1 by 2. So D1 by 2 minus D by 2 uh, into 2. Into T. Why 2? Because it is double shear. So you will get finally the area formula. D1 minus D into t okay and then put in the strength equation strength equation is because it is shear stress you will get this uh, tau upon load upon area okay here you see you will uh, have to get tau also uh, tau induced tau you can find out because in the previous two steps you found out d d1 and t okay tau you will get here tau induced tau i and you have to check it whether it is less than the given tensile uh, given shear stress if it is uh, less then it, the design is safe if it is more then you will have to change the dimensions okay uh, next is crushing of single eye crushing of single eye single eye is is this one and if the pin is there in the center then that material will be they say it is being pulled okay pulled by tensile force then that uh, thing now will be crushing you see if this is the single eye and it is being pulled that material there will uh, it okay here there will be a clearance but here it will be crushing that material will be crushing there so that is actually semi uh, cylindrical portion which will be crushing but you know we have seen crushing area should be taken as the projected area so the projected area we are taking means what what are we doing we are taking only the rectangle area that rectangular area when it is you know uh, when we use we will find out the shear stress uh, sorry uh, crushing stress okay say so actually that uh, should have been uh, outer the here that is not t that is shown actually t is the i thickness in the center there okay okay come here so the crushing area will be a into d okay then uh, the crushing stress is equal to load upon area see load is p area is d into t and then in this equation if you substitute Okay, D also we known, T also is known. Then what are we doing? We are finding the induced crushing stress. Induced crushing stress should be less than the given crushing stress or the crushing strength of the material. If it is less, then the design is safe. If it is more, then the design is not safe. That means we have to increase the diameter. That is the strength equation. Okay. And uh, 
sigma c r i that is what we are finding out we have to check okay next step okay now the third step is uh, design of the double eye first we have designed uh, uh, the rod and the second we have designed the single eye now we are designing the double eye now considering that failure of the double eye in tension in tearing you see double eye has a two two limbs okay so when you are pulling it like this it will tear like this so when it is tearing that red portion that you are seeing that will be the area where it should fail so that is shown here in diagram like this uh -huh. you see 3d is not expected from you in the exam only these 2d diagrams are expected okay so then d1 uh, minus d and thickness is t1 okay and this one this thing that is the area d1 minus d into t but uh, two y2 top also bottom also there are two limbs no two eyes are there so for two eyes two okay and in this strength equation you have to put and uh, and uh, uh, see and um, 2 into d1 minus d into t1 sigma t okay what all you do know you don't know t1 so here you see it is wrongly written here that this will check for value of sigma t t1 uh, this is wrong t1 only you are you are going to find out in this formula okay whatever value comes you will that is will be t1 okay now considering the shearing failure see you see that is a pin is there and you are pulling it means like a cake piece these things will be falling okay like uh, okay that will be the area you see uh, that is the that is the center line you see it is a rectangle like this that is the center line and then that is a d by 2 and this is d1 by 2 okay and uh, that is the thickness t oh sorry it is not t it is t1 it should be is it not okay that is by mistake he has put as t it should be t1 okay and uh, if you write d okay the, the area will come out like this okay here instead of t it should be t1 okay okay then uh, uh, sharing of the double i what will be the strength equation strength uh, uh, you see actually that is the d1 by 2 okay uh, okay this is the uh, our uh, formula tau is load upon area and this is what you will get and from here here you know um, the see t1 we have already got here right so t1 also we know t1 should be uh, in this formula t1 okay d1 minus d1 t t only t, you know tau ta, ta, stress tau in uh, induced uh, that one that is what sorry shear stress induced you know that is what we are checking okay next is considering the crushing failure crushing failure of uh, the uh, double i we are considering the double i no crush means what that is you know the pin is there so that uh, semicircular uh, area semi cylindrical area that will be crushing against the pin the pin is there inside okay so that area can be drawn like this uh, that area yeah this is a uh, you know that is d and this is the thickness t1 of the double i and uh, this will be the area up and down okay d1 into t1 into 2 because up and down and uh, you know the uh, equation will be like this this is the crushing stress sigma cr okay everything is known so sigma cr i will be checking okay last step is design of knuckle pin okay uh, knuckle pin will fail in shear like this you see if knuckle pin two eyes are pulling this side single eye is pulling that side then it will fail see that is the crushing area that, that is a shearing area is another shearing area that's why it is double shear top and bottom so area will be pi by 4 d square into 2 okay and uh, in this uh, equation tau is load upon area and this you will in, uh, put and you will find out what is this induced shear stress and that sh induced sh shear stress should be less than the shear stress of the permissible uh, shear stress of the material that is given okay uh, so 
um, with this uh, yeah yes with this you know uh, all the things this permissible shears crushing is quarter it is mentioned actually it is not quarter uh, and also it is also both for rod as well as the pin you see pin where material will be normally different but you know for solving the problem of diploma level no, not to make the things complicated uh, the pin material the rod material uh, and everything is given same no, not uh, the cotter here it should be pin material okay thank you we'll stop here